Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up and honestly in March I read mostly romance books so it's going to be a very romance focused wrap up. I was just like in the mood for a bunch of different romances so I read just like straight up smut, some fantasy romance, some rom-coms, some regency romances. Like I really kind of like read the spectrum of romances so I'm really excited to talk about them. The first book that I finished in March is Queen of Empire by H.R. Moore and I have a reading vlog where I read this so check it out. This is a fantasy romance that takes place in this world where you can have three different kinds of powers either body, mind, or spirit and Anita is the strongest body that has been seen in centuries. Every competition that she enters she wins. So when the powerful good-looking descendants which are the ruling kind of families um, for body, mind, and spirit come to the city of Empire, Anita immediately grabs their attention. Once in Empire, the death of the ruling descendant of the body faction, Christiana, sets off a chain of events. The treacherous Austin who rules the mind faction is on a quest for a girl that Christiana was looking for and a challenger Anita stands out more vibrantly than the other contestants puts her in the spotlight and a perilous dip in the world's energy puts everyone in danger of starvation. So powerful factions are forming within the ruling elite and Anita finds herself at the center of their conflicts. So I ended up giving this one 3.5 stars. I thought it was a very solid fantasy romance. Um, I do think that on like the spice scale, it's definitely like not super spicy, but the romance is one of the main plot points. And I will say that I think that the romance itself was full of a lot of sexual tension and it has a love triangle that I found to be very well done. Usually in a love triangle, you can kind of go for one or the other or it can kind of be like annoying the way that the character falls for the two guys, if it's a girl between two guys, love triangle. Um, but in this, I felt like it was a very natural progression and the way that the love triangle went in this book felt natural. I also really enjoyed the world building. I love to see the different factions of mind, body, spirit and how they could interact and how we have these ruling descendants as well as some of the lore in the world. Based on the collective people's like emotions and going on in the world, the world like has this energy that can then determine future events. So, like when the energy dips too low, then like bad things start happening, like the crops fail, all that stuff. So I thought that was just a really cool element that kind of like the collective consciousness can direct the fate of the world. And the fact that the collective consciousness kind of like dipped after the death of Christiana and the people that were then in power were not doing enough to control it was very interesting to see. And overall, just like Anita as a character, I really enjoyed her. She was very strong-willed. I kind of like exploring her powers as well. I thought that this book also had a really interesting take on the power of meditation as well. So that was really cool to see in a fantasy book. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. The next thing that I read in March is I completely binged an entire romance series on Kindle in like a weekend. I was just addicted to it. It was just so much fun and really crazy to fly through and that series is The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. This series was just a whirlwind series about this really rich family in Massachusetts and kind of like the darkness of the elite. No one knows how the members are selected to the board of the Hale Holding and Banking Company, but there are rumors of a sordid rite of initiation. Whispers of how one woman and nine men disappear into a boarding room. The Hale family owns everything and now Royce Hale has his sights set on Marist. After an arrangement with the two families, Marist is draw drawn into Royce's atmosphere and into the dark world of the Hale family. So I ended up giving this book five stars because it was just so crazy like it was thrilling there was a bit of a mystery and the boardroom scene was literally like insane <laughs> um it is definitely a dark romance so please be aware of that before you go into this check the trigger warnings it went in directions that i was not expecting and yeah it's so interesting to kind of like explore these darker dynamics between the characters in these dark romances which is why i think that they're really fun to read and it was just like such like a fun read too because it's like these super rich people and just like the morals and like the way that the things work in these novels is just crazy so it was a good time so after that i decided i was going to read the rest 
of the entire series. So I then read The Obsession, which is the second book. And this one was probably the weakest in the series for me. I ended up giving it four stars. It just, it goes more into like the twisted dynamics between Royce and his father and Maris. And it's just like so twisted and crazy and like good time, but like very dark and twisted. Then we have The Deception, which is the finale. I gave five stars because I was on the edge of my seat reading it. And I really felt like Maris came into her own power and really just was so clever. And she finally stepped up to outmaneuver everyone. And I just loved it. Then there is a spin-off book called The Redemption, which follows the father, McAllister, who I literally hated in the main trilogy. He was the worst. And yet somehow I ended up giving this book five stars because Nikki Sloan was able to completely like turn his character around for me. And I actually really loved this book. It definitely had a different vibe because it was not as dark as the original trilogy. It was just kind of like a spin-off following this character on his redemption arc. I mean, it's literally called the redemption. So it had more of a lighter theme, more of kind of like, you know, trying to redeem yourself after you do horrible stuff. So Nikki Sloan was able to like endear me to this character that I did not like. And I enjoyed it. There is an age gap romance, but like an appropriate age gap romance with like a 26 year old and a 50 something year old. Anyways, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. Then I read a manga. That is The Promised Neverland Volume 3. This is a manga I've been slowly making my way through and this follows a group of children that live at Gracefield House and they are all kind of waiting to be adopted and they have this mom that takes care of them and they live a pretty good life except for one day they find out what actually happens when the children leave the orphanage and from there they are now planning their own escape and it's just so dark and twisted and I feel like the plot keeps thickening, especially in this third installment, so I can't wait to continue on reading. I gave this one five stars, and I've just been really enjoying my time with this series. Then next after that, I started reading a bunch of ARCs, which I have a specific reading vlog for all of the ARCs that I read in March, and that is up on my channel already, so please go check it out if you haven't. The first ARC that I read is Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders, and just look at this cover. It's so pretty. I love the purple color scheme and this is a space opera sci-fi YA book and it was just a really great sci-fi and reminded me that I need to read more sci-fi and I ended up giving it four stars. So the tagline is outsmart your enemies, outrun the galaxy. So Tina has always known that her destiny lies outside of the norm as she is the human clone of one of the galaxy's greatest alien commanders and she has this homing beacon inside her that will light up when the time comes and the alien companions will come and take her to space. So Tina is just kind of waiting for this home beacon to light up and waiting for her life to begin. And then it does and Tina feels like she was completely not prepared and thus she takes off on this amazing space journey to outrun enemies old and new. And I adored this book. I just thought it was such a fun sci-fi. I loved also the take on kind of like all the different alien creatures and I kind of love sci-fi because you can just really have things that are like way outside the norm and trying to kind of explain the ideas of why all these crazy cultures like are the way that they are that are like not human. I just think that's so fun and like the author can really just be very unique and inventive with it and I found that the aliens in this were definitely so cool to see like there are many unique things that i would not have thought of on my own in these creatures um one also really cool thing that i thought was awesome was that like every alien creature just automatically introduces themselves with their pronouns and that that was just like part of like the whole like galactic kind of i guess manners and i know that like pronouns are something that's really important that a lot of people are doing today like putting your pronouns in your bio stuff like that so i just thought it was cool that we have this like society where it's like already accepted as the norm thing to do besides that this has a great found family trope and like the crew is just so great they had a great dynamic and the found family it's just really sweet and endearing but beyond that like i loved their space adventures i felt like this novel the pacing just got like right into it because like we're not on earth waiting for tina's life to like begin as long as tina has waited for her life to begin so it's just really like get up and go and you're like in space and doing all these spacey things and yeah it was cool i felt like maybe the villain could have been fleshed out like a little bit more but Overall, I enjoyed it and I'm interested to see where this series goes. And I do think one of the strongest aspects of this book is its exploration on identity because Tina has to live up to this legacy of the fact that she 
is literally a clone of one of the greatest commanders to have ever lived and how can she like she's basically a teenager like live up to these expectations that have been placed upon her shoulders so it, this book definitely deals a lot with her identity and kind of like those expectations that have been placed on her and explores that the next book that i read is to love and to loathe by martha waters and this is the sequel to of to have and to hoax however you don't need to have read this book to read this one they can if you read a standalones so i haven't read that one before but i really really adored this one to love and to loathe follows the widowed lady diana templeton and jeremy the marquess of willingham and they are infamous among the english elite because of their non-stop bickering at every social event in which they are together one evening an argument at a ball turns into a serious wager if jeremy is married within the year diana will get a hundred pounds from him so shortly after diana is completely shocked when jeremy comes to her with a proposition of the dalliance sort after jeremy's latest mistress leaves him in unfavorable critique jeremy's confidence in the bedroom is shot and so he proposes to diana that they begin a dalliance so that he can get some honest feedback on his performance and diana can signal to other gentlemen that she's open to take a lover diana thinks that taking him up on this counter proposal will only help her win the wager and diana is confident that her victory is assured but when they're focused on winning wagers they stand to lose their own hearts so i'm giving this one four stars i thought it was just so quick and fun to read it's definitely a regency romance with a more modern feel because this is kind of a friends with benefits situation but framed in like the olden times the regency times i'm sure that probably happened in the regency times especially this talked a little bit more about like how widows had some more freedom than like the regular woman would in society of that time but yeah there was just like a lot of witty banter and bickering and these characters were at each other's throats and they like didn't think that they were would ever even like like each other and the sparks were flying it was just cute fun really like light-hearted great regency romance and i flew through it the next arc that i read is second first impressions by sally thorne and this is literally like a complete new favorite of mine like i am obsessed with this book i loved the hating game by sally thorne when i read it like two years ago it was probably like one of the first rom-coms i ever read and sally thorne just continues to impress me so i just like absolutely adored this one it made me cry you can see me cry at the end of my arc reading vlog if you would like because i did cry on camera <laughs> at the ending <laughs> So Ruthie Madonna has worked at Providence Retirement Villa for pretty much her whole adult life. She lives on site and is at the beck and call of all the residents. She has her routine and nothing much ever changes and she loves her routine. That is until one day Teddy Prescott, the son of the owner of the retirement villa, mistakes her for an old lady when they have a chance meeting at a gas station when he later shows up to the villa with his father ruthie decides just how she will take her revenge on him and that is by offering him the job of being the assistant to the parlonies who are 90 year old four foot tall menaces and none of their assistants has less than more than a week ruthie really feels like she's offering teddy up to the sharks to ruthie's surprise teddy ends up being the ultimate hire charming his way through the entire villa and to ruthie's heart so i just absolutely adored this book i gave it five stars it might be one of my new favorite rom-coms and like it wasn't even that spicy but just like the emotions and the feelings between the characters just like was everything to me ruthie is just like very quirky and relatable but quirky in a different way than the main character of the hating game lucy so like um even though their names kind of sound familiar like they are both quirky in their own way but you can definitely distinguish them as characters and i just like love this opposites attract romance that we had going on because teddy and ruthie are nothing alike like ruthie is so like put together organized like set in her ways very routine and teddy is just like this kind of a mess but like a lovable mess and i just love seeing their chemistry and the way that they were able to come to understand one another it was just very beautiful and i i love the parlonies like they were such like a terror but like it was so heartwarming and then we also have a side character melanie who like at first i think kind of like the the core of this novel is that people are not what they seem at first because like melanie the side character 
um, with the Sasuke method, like Ruthie thinks that Melanie's not like going to like her at all and that it's she's like too good for her and then they end up being really good friends. So it's just like very heartwarming and I think the deeper message at the core of it is that sometimes people like deserve second chances and what you first think of them might not be the truth. So I don't know, this book made me cry. I just like loved it. Like just everything like the dialogue was so funny between the characters and like it, it's just like so quirky and fun and i just like love this retirement villa and like the old people and like just ugh. everything about it just makes me emotional like so emotional i can't really form sentences and i absolutely just like adored it everything about this book and yeah sally thorne has done it for me yet again then the last two books that i read this month were both fantasy romance books so next up we have deadly dreams by kj sutton this is the third in the fortuna sworn series which is an indie published fantasy romance series that i've just absolutely been eating up and adoring i love the series so much we follow Fortuna Sworn, who is a nightmare, which is a creature that can touch you and know your deepest fears and project them onto you. And so she's literally terrifying. <laughs> she is the last of her kind because her brother has gone missing more than two years ago. She spends her days blending in with the humans and at night she searches for her missing brother. When a dark, mysterious fae comes across her at a goblin dark market, he offers her an offer that she cannot resist. Come with him and she has the potential to see her brother again and potentially free him and this is everything that fortuna wants in life her pretty much her only purpose and so she is drawn back into the world of the falling creatures the magical creatures the fae and things progress from there and it just gets absolutely wild and crazy and i can't even tell you what this third one is about because there's so much that happens so many cliffhangers in each book the series is going to be six books long so I'm looking forward to the fourth book in this series because this one ended on such a cliffhanger. Of course I had to give this five stars. I loved it and there were just so many twists and turns and I just like never saw where the story was going. This does kind of like deal with the fallout of a sexual assault and trying to heal past that trauma and I felt like this book dealt very beautifully with that subject matter which is not always an easy subject matter to handle as well as kind of like healing from feelings of guilt their characters are going through many different things and i found that that personal journey was just handled very well for each of the characters as well as the plot was just like engaging and i just felt like things kept happening i didn't know where it was going and then it just came to a conclusion and it was insane so yeah this is just like a, a really great fantasy romance series and we kind of follow along with Fortuna and the dark fairy that she meets in the beginning but there are many other characters that come along and another character that may be a potential love interest as well and it's like a true love triangle where like all of them are interested in each other which you love to see it because I hate it when it's just like it's not even like a love triangle it's like a love tent you have to have that like you know that third leg of the triangle there this does that so I love it and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go this is just such like a richly imagined urban fantasy world with the Seelie Court and the Unseelie Court and the human world all mixed together, all sorts of different kinds of creatures. Things get twisty turvy. So yeah, if you're interested in fantasy romance, read the series because I think it is truly fantastic. And the last book that I read in March is The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen, which the first thing that I said when I finished my review is this is a perfect book. And I truly like feel like this book was just perfect. Like it was just perfect. Ever since she was a child, Lara has been trained to be a spy. She is a princess of her kingdom and she is being sent to marry the king of the bridge kingdom. On her wedding day, Lara has only one thought for her husband. I will bring your kingdom to its knees. The bridge kingdom is a lush series of islands that has a bridge running through it that transports goods from the north to the south and thus they have a huge control on the trade. Laura has been raised to believe that every woe of her kingdom and the starvation of her people is because of the greed of the bridge kingdom and especially of their tyrannical king, Aaron. Laura is prepared to do whatever it takes to fracture the impenetrable bridge kingdom. But once she is there and she sees the kindness of Aaron, everything is not as it originally seemed to her and she is confused as to where the actual truth lies and in addition to that there is a growing simmering attraction between her and her new husband that is impossible to ignore 
Like I said, I gave this book five stars. I just thought it was perfect. The politics of this world are like surprisingly very fleshed out and it just made the story so real. But what I really loved was the descriptions of the bridge kingdom itself. It's like this storm ravaged land, like chain of islands. And the jungle setting was so lush. And I just thought that Daniel L. Jensen did such a good job with like describing that as well as like the politics and the layout of the bridge and the way that everything worked around that I just thought was so clever and so well done and of course the romance between Aaron and Laura is one of the main focuses here and it just is definitely slow burn definitely like develops so well especially because it's kind of enemies to lovers but not really because he doesn't know that she is an enemy but yet she is like trying to defeat his kingdom so it's just really interesting because we see laura trying to like seduce him get close to him break through his defenses to learn his secrets and he is none the wiser for it and just how this like develops comes to a stunning conclusion that literally had my heart pounding my jaw was dropping i just like didn't believe what i was reading and it's just so interesting to see like a woman of in power like balance the spiral where she like pretends to be less powerful than she actually is and also just to see her conf conflicts like as she learns more about like the politics of the world and the way that everything works and like it's just perfect like the pacing is perfect plot is perfect descriptions romance like it has everything and i just thought that it was just completely so well done i flew through this novel in like two days i loved it and so if you're looking for a really great fantasy romance, I definitely recommend this one just because of how amazing I thought it was. So yeah, that was the last book that I read in March. So I felt like I had such a good March reading month. Like I said, lots of romances. I was really in my romance kind of feels. I read like a whole romance series in one weekend with a ton of books in it. So yeah, I just felt like I had a really great reading month. Like nothing was bad. It was 3.5 stars and up, which I mean like is pretty common for me, as you know. I don't really write books that low, but that's just my own personal preference. So if you made it this far in the video, please leave a little heart emoji below. Just let me know that you watched it and enjoyed. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. Follow me on all my social medias if you feel like keeping up with me. If not, then like that's fine too. Um, yeah. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite read of March was. I think for me, my favorite has to be The Bridge Kingdom just because I was so absolutely impressed with it. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.